peace and blessings everyone welcome back to the humble servants homestead guys today i am out here now what i had camera related to do was to just give you all an overview of the garden and what the garden is looking like guys because guess what all spring long and all summer long you have seen me come on through and harvest a lot of stuff out of this garden guys but guess what once the harvest is done and is finished guess what you have to come back on in and clean the garden on up and so that is what we are out here to do today we are out here to clean this garden on up guys that is why i gave you all a full 360 of the garden so you can see what the garden is looking like okay so right in here what we have is our corn that we planted in the springtime um, and since then we have harvest all the corn off of these stalks right here and so we're now going to go ahead and clean them on up so the plan that i have for these two beds right here guys is to pretty much put garlics in these beds right here i have four rows um, that we will be putting garlic in and yes i will be coming on in and adding some more amendments so that way we can get the best out of our garlic so come on in and let's go we're going to go ahead and start pulling these stalks out of the ground um so pretty much what it is that i am doing here i'm pretty much just pulling the stalks on out i have a piece of stick in my hand to go ahead and knock the dirt off simple reason why guys look at how beautiful this soil is and guess what i don't want to throw uh my soil away with these stalks that i am pulling out okay <laughs> And also remember that these are some beds um, that I have turned into a no-till bed. So we will not be coming in to cultivate these beds um, for so many years, guys. I want to say at least about three or four years around there, we have came on in and worked these beds with a rotor tiller. And I think we are at that point, like I said, where that we don't have to uh, come back on in until these beds anymore um, look at this i just want to show you all real quick look at that okay so this is uh, uh this dirt that has been built for quite a bit of years and so that is why we're not going to be tilling them but come on we have a lot of stalks that we have to pull on out so come on let's go ahead and start uh cleaning this garden on up
Well, it's a lot of fire ants right there. Throwing those ones over the fence. Mhm. Looking at those fire ants, I'm having flashbacks of them being on my foot in the in the orchard. <laughs> Flashbacks you come stand over here like oh no oh no i'm gonna stay in the distance of safety y'all may be looking on the other side and say hey why you didn't just go ahead and cut the corn and leave the roots in the ground absolutely I would have done that depends on what it was I was going to plant in here if you remember last year we came on through with a lawnmower and we pretty much just went ahead and mowed it all down um, letting all that corn stalk break back down into the soil that will help to build that soil with that organic matter that's in that corn stalk but well, like i said i will be coming on in to plant garlic in these beds and i don't want those stalks in the bed guys so that is why i went ahead and took them on out but um what we're also going to do the beautiful part about uh a no-till bed right if you notice in this garden bed the weed pressure is minimum guys of course that is with me also coming in and making sure I take the weeds out as well because um, I don't want weeds to go to seed in my garden because like I said, you will end up with more problems later on down. So what we're going to do, we will come on in and start pulling those weeds, but I don't really want to focus on pulling weeds right now because guess what? I still have quite a bit of hard labor work to do here in the garden and i want to go ahead and take care of those first so what we're going to do now come on camera lady so what we're going to go ahead and do now is take these basils on out and yes guys i did save seeds from these basil plant plants so you can check out our etsy store uh to get some seeds from these basils right here uh, we're going to be getting those up list, uh, listed online. But one of the things I also want to show you, letting those basil go to seeds, guess what? <laughs> we have a whole bunch of little basil uh, seedlings down here, guys, mm. that is germinating. This one right here, that's Kalalu. Um, But all these little ones that you see, these are basil, all right? But we're going to go ahead and take them on out. Uh, like I said, um, with these basil plants, they are finished uh, because we let them go to seeds. It pretty much tell the plants that, hey, look at here, your job is done. Now you can go ahead and shut down. So that's why you see a lot of them in here is also dying out uh, because, hey, they are finished. But what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to just come on in. I have a question. Just question. Yes. So with these seeds that have germinated, are you going to keep a couple of those to keep basil going in your garden? Um, well, I will leave them in the garden. I'm mm -hmm. not going to uh, pull them up. Uh, now the ones that's in the row, because I'm coming to amend the row, they may get covered. Okay. But um, for those ones that's in the walkway, I will leave them. Uh, but of course, once the frost come, it's going to kill them out anyway. Gotcha. Okay, so. But um, basil grow pretty fast, mm -hmm. so uh, maybe by the time our frost date come, we will probably Harvest. be able to get some basil. Now, okay. also I do have a basil plant, guys, that I have been clipping uh, the seed heads off mm -hmm. of, and it got so big, but with that storm coming through here, kind of 
uh, knock it down but it is still real nice and green mm -hmm. and still have basil on it just in case if we need to get some basil all right so like i said with these basils here we're just going to oh come on in oh, they're strong yeah they're pretty they're well rooted look at that well rooted okay so we're just going to Ooh. smells so good don't it does it? It smells so good all right we're just pulling them on out mm. You don't have basil germinated everywhere. Oh yeah, I I know I will. Um, and that is the thing. Uh, these these basil plants come from seeds um, that were planted last year mm -hmm. that drop into the garden and germinated in the early spring, guys. And I just went ahead and took them and plant them on out into the garden, so that way we can still have some basil keep on going. And also remember, we are in grow zone 8A, mm -hmm. all right? This is our grow zone that we are in, all right? I mean, it's a lot of basil seeds germinated yes, over here. Lot, um, you can see a lot of uh, little plants down here mm -hmm. from where they have fell and start germinating. I'll tell you what, this is smelling so amazing. Oh yeah. And you know also if you have basil or you grow uh, basil, you know you can also make tea with basil. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, basil tea is very good. It's very refreshing. Um, you know, so hey, keep that in mind. All right. So now that we have all these basil pulled out, now we're going to get them out of the garden. And oftentimes, guys, you know, with the harvesting, this is a part that you don't really typically see. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, this is also a part of the gardening, okay? But one of the things I want to show you, come on in camera lady. Look at how beautiful that soil is. Mm. How beautiful that is. Now, what I'm also going to do, um, I'll tell you what, stay tuned for that. I want to bring you all in um, when I come to amend these beds right here, guys. Um, you know, and getting them ready. And we're going to we're going to go ahead clean. Stay tuned. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going <laughs> to show you what I'm going to do. So stay tuned, y'all. Okay, and so yes, now we are moving on over to the tomatoes. Of course, these tomatoes uh, got to come on out as well. Um, but what I'm going to do with these tomatoes here, guys, these I'm going to be leaving the root in the ground. And I'm just simply just coming on through and cutting the stem of this tomato plant. Just like that, just cutting the stem. And I'm going to also take these kokutsa off as well. All right, and now with them being cut down there by the roots, all I have to do is just pulling them up just like that okay um what I, i'm going to also do i have a question yes because these kukutsa uh -huh. are a long way from home where did you plant them where did the mother plant start um these kukutsa 
there was some seeds that was dropped from you know the last crop that we planted well so, actually they started over there on the fence line remember you planted five plants well, on this fence line well it was more than five that was okay. last year yeah the first year i planted five yeah this year i probably planted maybe about uh anywhere from probably about 10 to 12 uh, vines over there okay but um they do run and like she said they end up all the way over here guys is because they're a vining vining plant and so so how like many to... feet would you say that is that they've traveled because they were on uh, that fence line well you see now remember those over there they was trying to come this way right but i had um last year what happened was it was a kukutsa that got busted open right there okay and so um they germinated early in the springtime mm. and as they started running they ran over there on the fence and then eventually started coming down my tomato down row. tomato row yes so that's where those ones come from okay but um you know hey I'm telling you, if, if you need something to eat and food to eat that's going to produce for you, mm. uh, the kukutsu will do it. All right? So we're going to go ahead, take these on out, just like that. MJ, come on, start grabbing these. And if you see how easy that is, uh, once you cut cut that stem all the way down to the ground and just pull up on the cages and it release real easy. What do you want me to take them? Take them around back. Okay, guys, <laughs> and it was just, well, it was just that quick. You know, it didn't take us a whole lot of time pulling these tomato cages on out. Um, now, what we're going to do, we're going to leave them and let them go ahead and dry up inside of these cages. And then later on, we'll be able to just come and pull all the stems and all that out of these cages, putting them up for next year. Okay, now one of the things what I want to go ahead and do, and I got rotten tomato on mm. you guys, but hey, that's all right. Just make my skin a little bit stronger. Woo. Okay, so what we're going to do now, um, we're going to come on in and we're going to start going ahead and taking all these weeds out. Okay, I'm not going to leave them um, so they can go ahead and reproduce. If you all notice, oftentimes I get the question, Mr. Humble, how do you keep your garden so clean? It's because whenever I see a weed, I don't leave it and say, hey, I'll get you later on. I'll get you tomorrow. I go ahead and pull that weed, guys. So that way I don't have to deal with its generation later on down in life. All right, so we're going to go ahead now and pull these weeds on out okay and so also one of the things I want to kind of show you all um, when I speak about amending your beds and how important it is to amend your beds guys now these here are beds if you remember I planted cabbage in the springtime in these beds right here um, simple come on in close camera lady so what I want to do is kind of show you all. This right here is just uh, goat manure from the goat pen. And I'm going to dig down a little bit deeper just to kind of see if I can get to it. But if you notice um, how different this soil is, a lot of it I've already broken down. But what it is I'm actually trying to get to is that chicken manure that I've put on these beds um, through the fall time 
um, getting these beds ready for in the spring. But look at this. One of the thing is you have to also keep in mind. I know we're doing garden cleanup, and I feel like I'm 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 giving a little lesson, right? What you think? Give we'll, it. Give it. Yeah, we're gonna give it. But come on in real quick, camera lady. I want to show them. So what this is? This is goat manure, and this right here is hay from where I feed the goats. Now, one of the thing is with this goat manure in this hay and also uh, the, uh, this hay right here would be considered as a brown, all right? So what's happening, it is breaking down on this bed right here. And as it break down, all the nutrients that's in this hay that is in the goat manure is leaching right back down into your soil. And that is why when you see we plant stuff here on the homestead, they strive the way how they do. Um, of course, you want to also make sure that uh, your soil also is well drained and also making sure that uh, it's loose enough to whenever those roots are ready to start venturing out, they can actually do so. So keep that in mind if you're a beginner garden, you're just getting into gardening, keep those things in mind. Now, one of the things, if you don't have uh, goats and you don't have chicken, and you don't have means to get to grass or anything of that nature guys you can always uh, whenever you cut your grass you can always now see we have a problem see <clears throat> and that's why I had to stop look at that you know what that is whoa that right there was a black widow guys <laughs> and yes and I where to, was it? Huh? And where was it? It was on your uh, dress. See? <laughs> Crawling See? up. But that's all right. That's, that's, <laughs> Man! You, if you don't come into the garden, you just don't experience these things. So it's okay to be in the garden. Go ahead and grab that yellow bucket for me, please. It's okay. Mm. It's all right. So guys, um, like I'm saying, <laughs> keep in mind, always make sure that you, you put organic matter back inside of your garden. Um, it, it is good. It's good for your garden. It breaks down and make it even better mm. all right so you wonder how we get things to grow like they grow here on the homestead is because we're always now in you the have garden. a spider on your pants leg i got one yes right here yes i see him it's all okay. right see see how you ran <laughs> it's okay you know you just go ahead and knock them off trust me um, I've been bit by spiders a lot, guys. Um, today is not the day I would today, like to be bit. Yeah, I don't want to be bit either, but no. if I do get bit, I just have to deal with it like I do with all the rest of them. Yeah. All right. So, all right. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead now and start pulling these weeds out. And we want to bring you all back and show you all an overview of the garden. Um, as a matter of fact. I'm gonna let my son go ahead and pull the weeds and we're gonna go over there. We have some Kalaloo that we wanna go ahead and start cutting those on out. And I'll let him pull the weeds and we'll rake up and make sure we get this thing looking ready again to start planting it. Yeah. All right. And I'm gonna tell you, crabgrass is one of those things, guys, they love gardens. Mm -hmm. They love to be inside of your garden. And I love pulling them out too. <laughs> And guys, don't be alarmed. Even though we didn't let these green tomatoes go to a full harvest, I think we are going to have some fried green bread. tomato bites, some fried green tomato bites. So I just cut them up into little chunks and fry them in some tallow. But yeah, let's get these weeds cleaned up and we'll be right back.
Okay guys, and you see me raking this corn trash back inside of these rows is because yes, I am coming in with some goat manure to put on the top. Now once we put it on the top of this right here, um, it's going to break down, okay? So that is why I'm raking it back on the top of the bed um, just because of that, okay? And so how, mu how many months or how long will this be before you come and plant um, uh, the garlic? Yeah. Uh, probably in about another month and a half. Month and a half, about six weeks. Yeah, about yeah, about six weeks. I'll be coming back on in um, to start planting my garlic. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, uh, garlic is also remember a heavy nitrogen feeder mm -hmm. um you know slow release fertilizer is good for garlic um so what i may also do i have some chicken manure that has been sitting down um you know that has been sitting down um if you notice right here as well this is chicken manure right here on the top of these beds so um when i say if a bed is just sitting down and it's not doing anything Go ahead and put some chicken manure on top of it and let that bed go ahead and rest. Um, right over here, if you notice as well, uh, we do have uh, more chicken manure on that bed right there as well. So that way, when I come on in to plant my garlic, all I have to do is just put them in the ground and they're good to go. So um, once I amend this, I'm going to come on in, um, put... Uh, the chicken manure that I ha have been sitting down for a while on top of here, then I'll put my goat manure on top and just let it go ahead and uh, sit down and wait till it's time to plant out um, our garlic, okay? So, needless to say, keep in mind, always make sure you go ahead and get your beds prepped and ready and amended to receive whatever plant you're going to be putting in all right Okay, where are we doing now, Mike? Yes, um, now we are here to take these basil. Uh, excuse me, take these basils, right? <laughs> so now we are here to take these uh, asparagus uh, ferns on out, guys. Um, so just coming on in. chopping them out just like that whoa look at that <laughs> we have asparagus mm. Next to it, it's not I tall. Sure don't feel energized. Oh, you try one? Absolutely. Oh, for me or MJ? Here, you go ahead. Get a, break that top off. Mm -hmm. So tender with that rain that just came through here, tendered them on up. It, your mom had to get used to that flavor, didn't it? Mm -mm. It actually tastes like a, a snap, sugar snap pea. Mm. Like snow peas. Man, I tell you. I didn't even realize those were under there. Yeah, because all of this stuff was covering it. Was covering it up. But that is a very uh, sweet, tasty tree. Wow. And so, also, one of the thing is here, guys, is 
morning glory. Mm. One of those things that I all in times have to deal with here inside of the garden. I hate them. I don't like the morning glory because they'll come on in and just try to take your garden over. Okay? Asparagus seeds. And yes. Here's some asparagus berries. Now these, I will leave these right back on in this area and let them go ahead and reseed themselves. That way we'll have more asparagus in this spot. And I tell you one thing, guys, with this gardening cleanup, it looks like we're actually getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a plus. All right. Oh, did you cut the other asparagus? You want these? I sure do. Mm. Thank you kindly. So tender. Yes, indeed it is. And I uh, pray that with us cutting these on down, um, it will go ahead and start stimulating a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, growth of some asparagus in this area right here. But guys, um, the sun is getting hot. Um, it is actually brunch time. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think we're going to stick a pin right here. So we're going to make this video here part one. And we will catch you all back later on with part two coming in to clean out these okros right here. Mm -hmm. And also cleaning up some stuff we have down there at the bottom garden. So stay tuned for that. And uh, we will catch you all in the next video. Just want to say thanks to each and every one of you all out there for stopping by the Humble Servant Homestead. And as always, peace and blessings to each and every one of you all out there. Remember, you keep a smile on your face, mm -hmm. you be happy, you be cheerful, and you be blessed. Mm -hmm. Until next time, we will catch you all in another video. Have a blessed day.